Well, good day, viewers. Today we have a 2007 Garage Man's Companion. It's a 1500 Sierra 4x4. And it's here because the four wheel drive is not working correctly. Now I see on starting it, if I could turn the key. light is on, tire pressure monitor message is on. Now right now it shows that it's in too high. Switch it to auto and it apparently went into auto. Switch it to four high and it doesn't go to four high. It's stuck in auto now. Shut it off and just turn the key on see if we can hear the encoder motor moving. Let's turn the heater fan off here. Let's see if we can hear anything. No sound. No sound. Okay, well, we're going to put a scanner on it and scan it for codes and see why the, uh, we'll see what codes it has to offer us and go from there. So I've ID'd the vehicle, I'm going to do a network code scan. Uh, I noticed the uh, airbag light is on as well, so there's probably something going on with that. Let's have a look. So we have an EVAP system, small leak detected code, that's why the check engine light is on. Front end crash sensor, that's pretty common. Sensor 1, I believe that's the right side, but I can't be 100% certain of that. Door switch codes, motor, mirrors, passenger door. Lost communication with VCM. HVAC airflow control feedback circuit problem. Left front tire pressure sensor, and that's the end of the list. Or it's finished recording. Seat module, theft deterrent. Transfer case, here we go. Motor A or B circuit short to battery or open. Incremental sensor circuit short to battery or open. Four wheel drive indicator circuit short to ground or open. Four wheel drive high range indicator control circuit short to ground or open. I think there isn't any codes. Transfer case neutral indicator. Lost communication with electronic brake control module. Now I understand the customer had disconnected a couple connectors, so he may have inadvertently, inadvertently generated a bunch of these codes. So we've got a record of them, so I'm going to just go into the transfer case controller now and clear the codes out of it. And see if there's any codes that have returned. Incremental sensor circuit short to battery or open. C0396. I'm going to write that down. C0396. And I'm going to try the motor now and see if it'll actually work. I heard a, uh, what sounded like the actuator motor move. That's my battery charger cooling fan running and mode switch selected auto four-wheel drive transmission rain transfer case lock front axle engagement looking for the actual gear that the transfer case is Transfer, let's watch the current. I'm going to try to operate the, the transfer case control switch now and see if it'll work. So it's in auto four wheel drive now. No, it's actually two wheel drive according to the switch. Now it's in auto. Hmm. I see nothing has changed there. Nothing changed on the switch. It stayed in auto four wheel drive, the mode selector switch. So I'm going to have a look at this trouble 
travel code C0396 and see what that suggests. So I'm going to have a look in the Snap-on Troubleshooter for this code. Code tips. C0396. C0396. Transfer case code tips C0XXX. Incremental position sensor circuit short to battery or ground or open circuit. It sets if the transmission transfer case control module sees incremental 8 volt reference signal not between 1.5 and, and 8.2 volts or does not receive incremental impulse signal voltage between 0.5 and 4.6 volts or incremental low reference signal circuit has an open or high resistance. Well, that's useful. Let's have a look at an actual troubleshooting chart. The actual switch on the dash is working. You can see the step voltage from it as I moved it through the selector. But this says mode switch selected is auto four wheel drive and that never changed. So I questioned this data parameter. I'm going to look at this troubleshooting chart for C0396. So you need to know what transfer case it has in it. Uh, so a site that I find useful here is this comp9.com where you can put, put in the VIN number and it decodes it and tells you the RPO code. So we're looking for an RPO code that starts with an N. And I see they're not listed alphabetically unless I can sort by this column. No. Well, that's nice. JK. NQH, transfer case. Active two speed push button control illuminated switch activated two speed transfer case NQH. Well, that's what we've got. That uh, Comp 9 place or site is a subscription service, so it's not free. I have yet to find a free one. If somebody knows of a free one, then let me know. Here is a case on Identifix. Uh, C0396, check for corroded wiring at X109, and lots of uh, transfer case encoder motor problems causing that. Let's see what the diagnostic flow chart suggests. See, this is why you need to know the RPO code, because the troubleshooting charts are different. So there's C0396 with an NQH and an NQF. Now the RPO code list is in the glove box. You on a GM product you can typically get that anyways but I find it easier just to do a search for it now I didn't see what type of descriptor it was I gotta go back and look at the fault code here let's see the descriptor for that code and symptom 05 well it doesn't have okay open high resistance that's what that means C0396 open high resistance okay I'm gonna read this so here's my take on this is this transfer case incremental position sensor and the transfer case rotational position sensor both send current transfer case mode range position to the transfer case control module both sensors send this information as voltage signals which are converted to degrees and rotational direction by the transfer case control module software. If the two sensors disagree by greater than a predetermined amount, the DTC will set. So the IPS, the incremental position sensor, receives an 8-volt reference signal and sends back a transfer case signal to the rotational direction signal and the rotational position sensor also known as transfer case 2 four-wheel drive actuator position sensor receives a 5 volt reference and sends back a continuously variable pulse width modulated signal to the TCCM this continuously variable signal indicates the position of the transfer case actuator so in other words both of these signals are disagreeing conditions for running the code and basically ignition on anytime the voltage is greater than 10 and a half volts and we have this code voltage on the encoder signal circuits less than 0.3 volts or greater than 4.6 and right now if I look at the data the incremental position decodes at 113 degrees and now I see this one is at 2.4 volts 2.3 volts but a few seconds ago it was at zero 
and the incremental position sensor voltage is at point zero, 0 0.9 volts over here. Now it just dropped to 0 0.6. Seems to be changing. So there could be some corroded wires. They mentioned a connector under the hood. I'm going to have a look. So it isn't moving anything and I noticed the voltage spike down to 0, 0.0. I don't know if this one changed at all, but this one's been, since I started recording, has gone as low as, well, I think it's low as 0 and as high as 2.5. Let's just back up here and see if it actually did go to 0 at any, yeah, sir. See, I was right. It was down to zero here, or close to zero. Let's see what the value is. Yes, 0 0.2, 0 0.1, 0 0.2. So I was right. that There is a problem with this. Let's have a look at the electrical diagram. So here's the wiring diagram for the transfer case controls shows a rotational position sensor which I understand is serviceable separately and it also shows the incremental encoder signal which is part of the transfer case module or the transfer case control motor itself inside here and all of the wiring goes through this X109 X109 will be under the hood someplace and let's find out exactly where X109 is. So we go to locations. And this brings up a master component list. Or it was supposed to. That's not what I wanted. Oh boy, let's start over again. Let's go back this way instead of... Normally if you click on the LOC, it takes you to a master component list. There it goes. I must have clicked outside the box. So we have to scroll down till we find X109. Everything's listed alphabetically. X109, 40 cavities, engine harness, not diesel, or engine harness, diesel to instrument panel harness, left side of engine compartment below the underhood fuse panel. So let's see what the connector looks like. I suspect it's gonna be one with a latch on it. Yes, it is, it's quite a big connector. Uh, let's click the back button, not close, and the back button, and let's see if it shows an actual picture of it. i got to scroll down to X109 again. Harness routing views. Oh, boy. Forward lamp harness. I believe it's right below the uh, fuse panel. This doesn't show it but I'm pretty sure it's right below the fuse panel. I'm going to go back to monitoring this signal voltage, which I'm doing right now. And I'm going to move the wiring in that general vicinity. I'll show you where I think the connector is. Okay, so I think this is the connector right underneath here, this very large one right in here. Let's set up the light, or at least try to set it up. So I think that's this connector here. I'm wiggling the connector and I don't see any change on the voltage. It's still changing all by itself. Let's take that apart and have a look at it. Oh, I'm, I'm believing that that's the connector. Oh wait, there's another one under here. But that's not a latched one. I'm pretty sure that this is it right here. So that's the voltage from the incremental sensor with the encoder motor unplugged that goes to zero. Now I was graphing it earlier while I was wiggling the wires underneath the truck and uh, I wasn't getting any significant change. It was just changing all by itself. For instance here it was just changing for no reason. Nothing was moving and it was changing. So I'm going to look at this electrical diagram and see if I can uh, Put a resistor in there to simulate that sensor because it looks like it's just a potentiometer and see if the voltage changes that would be that would uh, try to eliminate the wiring so here's the electrical circuit and this is what's in question in here is this uh, encoder 
transfer casing incremental encoder impulse signal. It's an 8 volt power supply to pin G. So we're going to confirm that. I've got the transfer case encoder motor unplugged right now at this connector here. And the signal wire is pin E. Now I'm not sure if that's an analog signal or, or a sine wave or something or an analog voltage. But nevertheless I should have 8 volts on this white green wire. And that is, let's flip this page over, picture of the connector. That's what it looks like. So that's pin G, which is that one, and it's white green. Let's have a look at it under the truck. So that is the encoder motor connector, and I believe that's the correct pin. It looks like it's white and green. Yes, it is. But according to that, I've got 0 0.02 volts on that circuit measuring it relative to the negative post of the battery. I'm going to plug it back in and see what my voltage is at zero right now, which sounds seems odd. Well, I'm confused now. I plug it in, it comes back to around three volts now. I got to get this up on a hoist so I got some more room to work underneath it. Now I don't like the signs of green death poking out from behind that encoder motor connector is that related to my problem hmm and why did it go to zero volts on that 8 volt reference when I had it unplugged unless there's unless it generated some other kind of fault code by having other circuits open there who knows what the backup strategy is like in the PCM or in the TCCM gotta definitely get this on a hoist so I do like it when they tell you exactly what's supposed to happen. Here's the C0396-05 action taken when the DTC sets. All shifting disabled, the service four-wheel drive indicator remains illuminated for the remainder of the current ignition cycle and the incremental encoder sensor 8 volt supply shut off. So that's why we had no voltage when I disconnect it. So I would imagine you would have to test that circuit with, with it plugged in or back pinning it that just sucks. Well now they contradict themselves. Under circuit testing it says key off disconnect the X1 connector at the transfer case encoder motor which I have unplugged. Turn the key on engine off using probe J whatever. Test for 7.5 to 8.5 volts between the incremental encoder sensor 8 volt supply circuit and pin G in a good ground. Well if it turns it off because there's an active fault code, how could you do that? Because here it says if the voltage is less, which it is now, test the affected circuit for a short to ground or an open high resistance or short to voltage. That doesn't make sense. Hmm. I hate just throwing parts at it. This $600 encoder motor, I'd like to be more sure of myself. It's likely that, but... Damn it. So I decided to go after this X109 connector and that's it. It's underneath the fuse panel. You can get it out by lifting the fuse panel and unclipping it and pulling it out. So now I'm on this actual wire here, the signal wire C10 connector, uh, X109 C10 blue and white wire. And you can see the voltage is jumping around exactly the same way as it is on the scan tool over there. But when I go to the 8 volt wire, which is B9 here, it's a white and green wire, I should have 8 volts on that wire, and I don't. That's the strange thing. I'm going to check it again. So all I have on that wire is 0.8 volts, 0 0.78, 0 0.76, and that's B9. It's a white green wire. It's hard to see it in there, but that's in, that's in the white green wire. Now it just dropped to zero. And I know I don't have a problem with my ground. So either that wire is shorted to ground or that sensor is pulling it low. But then how do I get how do I get more than the source voltage out of the sensor unless I have a bad ground on this wire, which is B12? That should be zero. 
That's a purple wire. Let's have a look at that. So I'm on B12, a purple wire, and it's 0 0.01 volts, which it should be because that's a ground. So unless this 8-volt reference wire is shorted to ground somewhere between the uh, between this connect, well, anywhere on this circuit, hmm. I'm going to see what happens when we unplug that connector X109. Or maybe I'll go underneath and unplug the encoder motor again and see if we have a change in that 8 volt. So I disconnected X109 and it looks pristine internally. Identified that 8 volt power wire. And with the key on I read 12.2 volts on it. And I've double checked that I'm on the correct wire. That doesn't make sense that it would be 12.2 volts. It's supposed to be 8 volts, but yet down at the transfer case when I was down there and measuring it, it was zero. And then I read in the service literature that if there's a fault code, it shuts down the 8 volts. But now I've got 12.2, so I'm confused. <sighs> oh boy. So with that connector reconnected and back pinning, the voltage is fluctuating from 0 to 0.99, now 1 volt. So either that wire is shorted to ground somewhere between X109 and the transfer case and coder motor, or it's actually a failed encoder motor. I'm going to go down there and unplug the encoder motor and see if it goes to... Well, I can't explain why it's 12 volts with the connector unplugged but definitely something going on either with the wiring or the encoder motor. Well, that doesn't make sense. When I unplug the encoder motor, it goes to point zero 0.02. You would think I'm plugging X109, which has all the wires to the encoder motor going through it, would generate the same issue. Hmm. So here's my thought process. I've got the encoder motor plugged back in, I've got the X109 disconnected, so I'm on this half of the connector, and I'm going to check for continuity to ground on the signal wire, the ground wire, and the 8-volt power supply wire. So we're measuring right at pin B9 right now, and it shows infinite over 20 million ohms resistance. Now the interesting thing is, B12, which is the ground, shows 3.7 million ohms. And C10, which is the signal, shows 3.73 million ohms. I'm going to go underneath and unplug that. I, I believe that this wire should have continuity to ground through that encoder motor. Because it shows a ground here. It was grounded this way or at least there was zero volts on it coming from the controller. Let's go unplug the encoder motor now. Okay, with the encoder motor unplugged on C10, I have more than 20 million ohms. On the ground, I have an open circuit, and of course, I have an open circuit on the reference. Now, I'm going to just check between wires here, but I don't think we have any continuity between wires. But I'm going to get another test probe and check across these two, two combinations. So based on the fact that there's no ground in this encoder motor, I think this thing has failed. And it has a high failure rate according to all the statistics. I just don't like throwing a $600 part at the truck unless I'm reasonably sure of it. So I'm back pinning that 8 volt wire at uh, B9 at CX109. I'm going to turn the key on. Interesting. Initially goes to 8 volts and then drops back to about 1 volt. So obviously when it sets that fault code it shuts down the 8 volt supply. And it won't do it again until I cycle the key. Didn't do it that time. Got to wait several seconds before it'll actually do it again. So based on my test results, I'm going to call that encoder motor. I should have just went with the cases that were on Identifix. Let's hope that fixes it. So this morning we have a new part. New uh, actuator. 
assembly. Now I believe this thing has to be calibrated to the vehicle. There's no master spline on that thing. Where does it go? Hmm. That's interesting. Well, let's look at the service literature and see what's involved in changing it. Well, the service literature makes no mention about putting it in a specific gear. I know it was in four-wheel drive when I drove it in. I could tell by the uh, stress on the drivetrain when I was turning corners. Uh, that gear inside there was under quite a bit of tension, and it fell back to a relaxed position. There's no indication of uh, sinking it. So we're just going to put it on and see what happens. So there are four bolts that hold the actuator on. They're T40, 13 foot-pounds when you retorque them. And this was under considerable amount of tension when I pulled it off and it went back to a relaxed position, whatever that happens to be. Now this is, this is the motor rotational sensor here and there's another one inside the transfer case encoder motor which I believe is defective. So we're going to install this new part. I've cleaned the gasket surface or the seal surface, put some dielectric grease on it, and uh, install this where it is. Oh, I guess I could call Dorman for help. Hmm. So there's the motor installed, dielectric grease on the connector, 13 foot-pounds on the four T40 headed bolts, and we're going to connect the scan tool up to it and see if it works. So now the moment of truth. It's in too high according to the indicator. I heard the front axle lock up. I heard the actuator turn. Let's try four high. Hmm. Well, let's have a look at some data. So I'm going to go into the transfer case control module. Display codes. Should have some history codes. History, history, history. Good. Let's clear them out. Yes. And recheck them for codes. Good to go. Let's have a look at some data here. Transfer case data. There's the transfer case position. Two wheel drive. And incremental position sensor in degrees. And incremental position sensor as a voltage. And over on this side, uh, incremental sensor sensor direction and rotational position sensor degrees. My understanding is these two values should agree 37 degrees and 37 degrees. Let's move it through the ranges now. So it's in too high now. This is for auto. And this is for high lock. And then back. And too high. Well, it seems to be working properly now. I just want to check the voltage at that uh, X109 connector on that 8 volt circuit. Just curious if it's, if it's 8 volts now, it should be. So I'm back pinning that green white wire which is the 8 volt reference voltage to the rotational sensor or the incremental position sensor. And with the key on it reads 7.65 volts and the spec is 7.5 to 8.5. Now the interesting thing is certain fault codes will cause it the module the uh, transfer case control module to turn off that 8 volts so that was my situation it would drop down to 0 0.9 and I was thinking the wire was shorted to ground or there was an internal short in the actuator because even with it disconnected it was at 0 0.9 so we're good to go now this is just a matter of putting all this electrical stuff back together again make sure this cover on this fuse panel 
covers it up properly because these panels are very prone to corrosion and I'm just looking around to see if I see any obviously corroded fuses but I don't but I'm gonna blow that off as well also going to clean the battery cables here this battery cable connection has seen better days that's it for now thanks for watching